welcome to the talk. Today we will talk about the major advance in artificial intelligence. It's called Genesema Toy Machines. I'd like to first discuss uh, the work of uh, Miss Hava Sigman. She used to work at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Now he has joined DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and she did work about super twenty machines. The title of the paper is called "Computation Beyond the Turing Limit." It appeared in Science, Volume. Two hundred thirty-eight, nineteen ninety-five, and I was really、uh, interested in that work, and I read carefully. If I understand correctly, however, is that、um, the work, the novelty is go beyond the final lens representation of the、uh, Turing machine, because if the Turing machine is represented by a final computer lens. Then it's a、uh, either binary or whatever the base, it's a, a rational number. So in computers, a rational number will not be the same as irrational number. In other words, that rational number is just a part of the real numbers. Real numbers, like from minus infinity to plus infinity. So digital computer only represent a finite number of, of those numbers in the real axis. All right. And it's approximation, but if you have a very long word length, then you basically can represent as many rational number as you want. Rational is R A T I O N A L. Rational number is a number that can represent integer divided by another integer. All right, those are called rational numbers. And in her work,、uh, she extended to a、uh, like like analog computation in the sense that. It can also represent irrational numbers between from zero to one. You have、uh, many, many, infinitely many rational numbers, but rational number is much fewer than irrational numbers.、Uh, so in that regard, many numbers that are irrational cannot be represented by a ratio of integer divided by another integer, right? But in the real world. Those irrational numbers, although there, can be approximated by appropriate rational numbers, because rational numbers are dense in real axis. Right. So in that regard, I think that her work is novel in terms of analog values. Of course, you cannot use digital computer to do that, but the real Usage is not clear because you can always represent any real value by any precision other than zero error by another rational number. So in that regard, the beyond the Turing、totally、machine, but practical application is not clear. Now that paper was published in Science, and、uh, I'd like to congratulate、uh, Hava. And、uh, in two thousand one, we published a policy forum in science. The title is "Autonomous Mental Development by Robots and Animals," and we raise a new directions. And we also have、uh, some new concept compared with traditional concepts. Basically, it's called task non specificity. In order to write a learning program. You cannot assume a task. If you do, then the the information used from the assumed task is very very rigid. Then the system tend to be brittle. So the title we we choose is called autonomous mental development. You want to model from、uh, inception of the life to. Prenatal development to postnatal development in adults. Since we published in science、uh, with、uh, quite a few、uh, co-authors, 
Now it's uh, 2018. Uh, from 2001, that's 17 years. 17 years have been passed, and we reach a fundamental breakthrough in terms of concept, in terms of algorithms, and in terms of experiment. At that time, we called autonomous mental development, AMD. We also work with others. We have a ITB transaction on AMD, autonomous mental development. Now, 17 years later, we had a breakthrough. The breakthrough can be termed as Genesema Turing machine. Genesema is acronym G for grounded, E for emergent, N for natural, I for incremental, S for skull, S K U L L, skull bomb, A for attentive, attention, M for motivated, and A for abstract. So the, uh, the eight letters form a new term called Genesema. So we can super Turing machines called Genesema Turing machines. It's not a restricted Turing machine, but rather a super Turing machine. Hava Siegelman has a super Turing machine in the sense of go beyond rational number representations. We have eight dimensions. All right, I'll explain what we mean by eight dimensions. And that's an eight dimension super Turing machine. When we write a paper, one is serial paper, another experimental paper, the two short papers, and we submit to science. And science unfortunately rejected. That happened earlier this year. Science review has two phases. One is the uh, is the in-house editor review. Basically, in that first stage, they will reject about ninety-five percent of papers. And and I th understand that that phase probably mainly look at the impact importance. In the submission page, there is a called under review, first date, then uh, uh, they change to advisor. And I guess that it means that the in-house editors submit to advisors. And there is a list of advisors uh, you can find out from the uh, Suns uh, Magazine's website, the list of advisors. And I think that those advisors are scientists. Then after maybe a, a week in uh, advisor stage, and the paper was rejected. I think, I guess that probably uh, review, the advisors do not like the work for unknown reasons. So that paper uh, was rejected. Now I want to explain to you what I understand by cross-discipline journals like Science and Nature. I think they are limited in terms of the capability to understand and to appreciate a major breakthrough in understanding of human brain on the one side and the new kind of AI system on the other. And when I submitted it was uh, uh, meant for AI on the computer science side. So the people, the in-house editor who handles this work, there are two people. One is the uh, male editor, and I submit to him because the, the early paper submitted to the female editor was rejected, but now it's much more important. And uh, the paper still end up uh, to that, uh, the female editor. I'm, I'm not saying anything about gender, I just uh, uh, for gender to identify two editors, all right? And I appreciate that the female editor forward to uh, advisors. Unfortunately, the advisors rejected. It's kind of strange. Huh? If uh, Hava Siegelman's work, they extend 
from rational number to irrational number deserve publication in science. Why this work, after 17 years, that reached the goal of another science paper in 2001 was rejected. It's like the paper is too important to be acceptable. And we do have theoretical proof. We do have experimental work in the AI ML context, artificial intelligence machine learning context, 2016. So in the experimental paper, we discussed the result and we also post this uh, context site and source code of the program on the website. So it's already independently verified by independent groups. It's not something like, you know, just propose the paper that people uh, in science typically accept this kind of paper that to be verified by independent group later. But in this case, it's already been verified by independent groups. Other groups, they, they verify the results. They, they use our source code to justify the improvement of the base data set. I'd like to uh, discuss this issue because that uh, has to do with uh, how science and engineering develop in a developed country like the United States. Now, I'm not saying that a uh, public has to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. What is important is that the publisher should have some guidelines. The guideline as I understand, it's important for the journal to serve the purpose that it put on the web. There is an organization called COPE, COP, the acronym for Committees on Publication Ethics. COP has rules. One is that you should have procedures about reviews on the website so that people submit work to your journal are aware of those rules. The second, you should also have appeal procedures published on the website. And I do not think that science has a appeal process published on the website. Now that's a violation of hope law. Because science is a member of COPE, COPE. So when I submit a letter to the editor-in-chief of science, and you can find his name from website, basically I submit an appeal saying that I present this kind of work and I'd like to appeal for the rejection. And maybe, maybe there's a way to make up. If you do not treat this case well, maybe you are not serving your purpose well. Understand that journal has a freedom to reject, but you also need to follow the rules. In this case, you do not have a, a peer procedure that is required by COPE. And I do not think that science has a very clear spelled out review process on the website either. It did have some say there is a first stage and second stage, but that's it. There's no procedure, detailed procedure that's published so that it's open for examination, whether they carry out this procedure in a sound way. When I submit this letter, attach another article that has more detail. The article is called, uh, I wrote, uh, the strong AI is clear, necessary, and practical. Published in Brain Mind magazine, the latest issue. And that was uh, uh, discussing the funding issues, reuse issues, all are very useful for the editor-in-chief of science to, uh, uh, to improve the journal. But unfortunately, 
there's no letters, no return from the editor in chief of science. And maybe, uh, maybe it does not want him to even read it or reply. But there was a attack to the magazine side just a few weeks after I sent the letter. And there was a very bad, malicious attack to our Brain Mind magazine side. It was so bad that the host has to put our website offline because massive email traffic, massive email traffic through this site because of hold in the uh, server program. Originally, I thought that if the email uh, was attacked, a uh, contact attack, you can just put aside the email uh, server, but the host just uh, took entire magazine down, brand my magazine down offsite for quite a few weeks. Quite a few weeks we discussed with the host and uh, the, the host did not really take care of until we do exactly what they said we need to really place a system file. And uh, then we do it back on the uh, online uh, status. Now, I do not have proof that science attacked our site. I, I only have a timing. But our brand mind magazine site was never attacked. Never attacked. After so many years of service on website, all right, never attacked. And in terms of timing, and I suspect that science editorial board, somebody initiate cyber attack on Brain Mind magazine. According to the federal law, cyber attack is a criminal act. And I'd like to publish this event and I would like to ask Science Editorial Board to investigate this issue. And I'm not saying that they have the legal obligation to investigate, but from the ethical point of view, from the COPE point of view, and I do not think and the publisher can or ethical attack another journal that's probably their own competitors because Brand My Magazine is a multidiscipline journal. And to attack a competitor journal, which is small, right, not as powerful and big as science is a criminal act. Next, let me talk about what kind of work was submitted to science that was rejected. It was called Genesis Turing Machine. Turing Machine is a model that designed by, uh, proposed and designed by uh, Alan Turing, and it has a, a tape um, that stored uh, letters, then is read right head, that is controller, and uh, then the controller can move the head up and down, uh, one letter at a time, then the human write input on the tape in symbols. Then the, uh, the processors will read letters from the read head and process changes states and write onto the tape, and the output is written on the tape. And this model called Turing Machine later was the, the, the model of all the digital computers that we are aware of today, um, from the supercomputer to the laptops uh, to cell phones. This is a, a probably the most comprehensive logic machine that we know so far, right? Um, in terms of digital computation. Uh, it does not really explain um, by itself the rich capability, but tremendous powerful because 
modern uh, computer science is based on this model. Then the, we go beyond that, all right? Because total machine on one hand, the uh, brain on the other hand, there is a huge gap. And it, people admit that, all right? How do you bridge the huge gap? That's Genesema, all right? We enhance, based on our understanding of the brain, we borrow the concept of Turing machine uh, to enhance through Genesema. What do we mean by Genesema? Genesema is an acronym that has eight letters, right? G E N I S A M A. Genesema, right? G for grounded. Ground on a real world, using new sensor like cameras, like microphones, and use the real effectors like looped arm, like sound generators, like wheels to navigate. And if the machine is grounded, then it will be able to learn directly from the real physical world, right? Avoiding handcrafting common sense knowledge like psych is doing CYC, right? And I think that psych has a fundamental problem of the scalability and the human is not able to really code common sense in a way that's not brittle and easier to use. I don't think so. Human learn direct on physical word, then can recall the, the knowledge directly from the physical context. Right, so easier to recall and easy to apply. Same body of printage is no hope for being that convenient, reliable, right? Grounded. The second the emerging, the internal representation of the brain or the network must emerge from interactions. It cannot directly supervised by a uh, teacher. For example, there is the a neural network proposed by George uh, Schmidt Huber and uh, his co uh, workers. It has a direct supervision from the teacher to internal neuron in order to have a gate, for example, in the neuron. And then, then this is not allowable because internal representation is not really emergent. We wouldn't be emergent. Emerging means that cell division in terms of cell migration, differentiation, and connections. All those must be totally autonomous by the cell self. It cannot be supervised by a program. Oh, you are the gate, right? You open or you close. It's not something that the human can do reliably uh, without uh, screwing up the capabilities, right? So emerging. Another is natural. The representation in type must be natural, must direct from sensory pattern, from effect patterns. Cannot be unnatural, be special coding method handcrafted by a human programmer. No. So all the, the features that developed or derived from the sensory and motor pattern must natural, must be natural, means that from naturally acquired sensory and motor channels. So don't use any handcrafted coding method. The fourth one is incremental. The learning must from incremental experience, all right? In the sense that if uh, I have a sensory input, then I generate action, then that action will ch change my sensory uh, input. For example, that if I have a uh, um, if I do not turn left, if I do not generate action of turning left, I will not be able to see the remote control. If I do not turn right, generate action of turning right, I will not be able to see that door. So you will not give less input without actually generate action. So it's not just incremental, but also sensory motor recursive. So the people in Google, they are doing Google AlphaGo, for example, they are training from static game sequences. That's not development. 
insisting not able to learn, improve on the fly through the entire developmental process, right? So it must be incremental. The fifth one is skull. We have a skull. Skull is the bone that close the brain. So close brain means that the human is not allowed to supervise internal representation to specify which neuron does what. Neuron must autonomously split or generate, right? So skull is off limit for supervision. It's a very important concept. Any learning inside the network, all the hidden neurons, can only do unsupervised learning. Although outside motor can be supervised, but inside neuron has to be totally unsupervised. The, uh, the next one is attentive. Attentive is the, the power of attend, sense of input to pick up something that's essential for the generation next uh, actions. For example, that suppose you have a pay attention to a particular a keyboard like A or B, then you can you have pay no matter it's larger, it's small, it's left, right, up, low. All those things must be automatically picked up by the system through this collected word, right? Attentive. And I think that uh, I have nothing anybody in the traditional uh, conference like CVPI and ICCV um, was doing anything that's for general purpose attention. Uh, that's what I say that have not entered the door of vision yet. They have not entered the door. Because the central issue is attention in a general setting, in the cultural environment. So, attentive. Then, uh, the uh, G E N I S A and M for motivated. Motivation is extremely important for autonomous learning. Without motivation, for example, if all the logic there, but I don't do anything, then I will not be able to drive myself to learn, to act. So what do you mean by motivation? For example, pain avoidance. If you feel hungry or the battery is low, you find a plug to plug in. Pain avoidance. Pleasure seeking. Or if you want to get a certain input, Seek the pleasure, the pleasure including like uh, meeting friends and in, in human, including uh, sex behavior. Um, so in that regard, pleasure seeking. And another thing is the uncertainty. Uncertainty is a motivation that, that builds on for novelty, right? And when you have novelty driven attitude or curiosity, then you tend to work harder for satisfaction of curiosity, right? So motivation is very important. Um, some people in the uh, WeChat group say that, no, 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 uh, motivation is too much. Necessary, right? Uh, Genesema Tori machine has uh, a motivation. And uh, the, the eighth one, the eighth one is abstract. Abstract means that the input is concrete, pixels and muscles, but you need to have loose abstract concept and abstract loose and this abstract concept loose are essential for generalization so that you apply to other concrete cases successfully. Of course, abstraction takes time, takes experience. Michael Jordan at uh, UC Berkeley says that traditional neural networks do not abstract well. And I agree with him, but only in terms of traditional neural networks. Since uh, the developmental network one has uh, embodiments like real world network one, real world network two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, they all have abstraction embedded. Abstraction in terms of location, in terms of type, in terms of scale, all developed. Uh, autonomously through interactions. Genesema Turing machine is a super Turing machine that is super in the sense of eight dimensions. Genesema. 
and I encourage you to uh, read the papers of IJCNN or attend IJCNN and Wiki WCCI this year in the summer in Brazil. And I look forward to see you. And if you have question, let me know. Unfortunately, science reject this work, and uh, the uh, uh, research community could have seen this work earlier, but unfortunately, uh, science blocked it. Thank you for your attention.